Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 2 of What If Naruto Had a Solo Sensei. Remember to hear this one to 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was the Ultimate Saiyan over in Anime King 3. And enjoy that guys. And also over in making 2, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto had a powerful familiar. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new I'll be replying talking about to all of you. And also remember to go ahead and click that bell notification to become a part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into this new episode start, the intro! So, the last spot we left off. As Naruto was upset, he was angry. As so far he has not gotten no real training from Kakashi. But he found out something on his own though. He realized when his clones did this spell, all the information that he seemed to gather come back to him. As that would help him a lot. He went to speak to Kurna regarding this. And a few other things. Kurunai was confused that Naruto hadn't learned water walking yet, or tree climbing, that made no sense at all, as she told him about the basics. She went to the Hokage immediately. Team 7 was called in soon afterwards, as the Harrison asked him about, well, one by one, about the team, everything about it, as Naruto was the last one. Naruto got so angry that he lashed out when Kakashi said that he was always pulling practice and not focusing. Harrison was surprised to hear what he heard, as Naruto demanded to be switched off scene 7 as he could no longer stand it with Kakashi. As Harrison decided to make a choice, as he had Uncle Midorashi take Naruto on as her apprentice if she did well. Well, from now on she was a full Jolene, seeing that she was just a special Jolene first, as Uncle was grateful for the promotion. As she decided to train the kid, but the thing was Naruto knew Uncle. As you remember her, Hebai was her name, when she was in Anvu, as she was one of the few that took care of him. As she remembered him as well, as he also made her a promise that when he get older, he would marry her. So with that she took him to the forest of death. Yes, a rather dangerous place for Jenin, but Uncle was not going to be a skimpy teacher. She was going to get right down to the dirty work, the rough part of being a ninja so that he would learn. As Naruto started the train with her. As Uncle was a slave driver but he was helping, it turned out that all Naruto wanted was a proper teacher and with a proper teacher he was actually able to learn. As Uncle realized that he was strong as hell, as he brought him to Guy to help with his taijutsu at first, they had to work on his speed, he was lacking in the speed department. So they got to speed training first as she bought him weights as they made their way. Some time passed they went on their first mission. As it was to give information to a spy as Naruto had transformed into a red-headed guy. The spy was Itachi Uchiha as that confused the two of them. When they returned back to the village, well they came in for a surprise as Sai. Sai told Harrison that Sasuke should be taken off the ninja program and he also wished to return back to his duties reason being. He got upset. As Kakashi allowed it, Kakashi was fast enough to stop it but he allowed Sasuke to hit soccer once, she knocked him down. She had watched him for so long she had known how he fight and how he sparred. So she was able to get a drop on him and that infuriated him so he hit her so hard that her face got swollen but she hid it. Because she loved him she didn't want to get him in any trouble. But she was also afraid being around him nowadays. Seeing that Naruto left, he was kind of the buffer of the group 
and no Sai was here. She was afraid of Sasuke. It turned out that she had a bad injury, a really really bad one, from the hit that she got as her head had hit the pavement. But she did not tell anyone. As she was brought to the infirmary, lucky enough she would be fine but her eye was swollen shut and she was in constant pain but she refused to tell anyone because she was afraid and she didn't want to get Sasuke in trouble, thinking that it was a mistake but she couldn't be around him anymore. As Harrison was pissed off of that, he took away Sasuke rank right there and then, as he was going to be in probation until he say when. Sasuke was furious at that, as he got more and more angry so from now on Team 7 was disbanded, as Sokka was taken to the hospital by Sai. As Naruto had to calm himself, despite no longer being a part of the team hearing that Sasuke did that, it pissed him off and knowing that Kakashi was there, Naruto was livid. But Naruto had a mission, as Jiraiya would be accompanying them towards the sand. The Kazakage need help with his son Seal. And Naruto, it would be his chance to meet a Jinjoki just like him. As Hiruzen thought it was for the best. So with that, the group was sent to the sand. As Uncle came to inform Naruto about this. So yeah guys, as base guys were left off, you guys can switch across the playstation for yourself. And also guys, remember to go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was The Ultimate Saiyan over on Anime Making 3 and enjoy that guys. And also over on Anime Making 2, I posted a brand new episode of What If Naruto Had A Powerful Familiar. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy as well guys. And remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime Making family. And thank you for all of your opinion and support and yeah. Without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. What am I saying? Let's get right into this, guys. To say that Naruto was worried was a massive understatement. He was gonna meet another Jinjulike. Would he be cool or would he be crazy? Yep, this was probably gonna end up badly. Uncle glanced over her shoulder as she saw Naruto as he looked worried. As Jiraiya was the one to speak, concerned that he was with them as well. I know you're worried about meeting another Jinjulike, but you don't have to worry. You will have your sensei and me there as well. Still gonna be worried, said Naruto as a three. Start to walk again. We should be there in a few hours, said Jiraiya. As Uncle walked beside Naruto, she placed the armor on his shoulder. He glanced up as she smiled softly at him, as he felt a lot better. As she gave him a wink, as they moved to catch up with Jiraiya. As Jiraiya was smiling, as he was scribbling down something in a little black book, once they reached him, as Uncle wondered if it was the next Itchy Itchy series he was writing, she held back a smile as she remembered Kurna reading the book. She always cursed at Kakashi for reading that out in public, but she was a hypocrite because she also read it as well. Let's pick up the pace, shall we, said Jiraiya, as he made his way, glancing towards Naruto every now and then. Huh, he's really grown. Back in Konoha, Sakura's face was completely red. Her best friend Ino had found out. That she had a thing for a sigh. What could she say? She's just like pale guys with dark hair. And not to mention, since he took her to the hospital when he grabbed her hand and brought her there. And he couldn't understand why he felt so worried. When Sasuke hit her, he said that he wanted to punch Sasuke down. Not to mention, he was the one that pushed away Sasuke. That made her start to realize that she had a thing for him. And Ino had peeked on her ever since she found out. I mean, come on, Sakura, he's rather pale. It's like he's never seen a son or something. I half expect to see him sparkle or something, Ino said, in a joking tone. I get it, Sakura said. I don't think so, said Ino. Shut up, Ino. Yes, I might have a crush on Sai. As I said, I like. Peel guys with dark hair. Like him and Sasuke Gun. Also, he's really nice to me. He's just bad at showing it. Do you really like him then? Ino asks. Yes, I like him even more than Sasuke. So just deal with it. As she shouted a bit, I think you're gonna have to deal with it before me. What do you mean, Sakura asked, as Ino pointed. Sakura froze, as she saw Sai standing there. Five feet away from them, he probably heard everything, as Sai blinked a few times, before he vanished. Well, he's running away. Seems like he liked you as well. Probably he's just shy. As Sakura ran away, Realizing that Sai was there the entire time, as Ino simply laughed. But in a way, she was happy seeing Sakura like this. Meanwhile, back in the sun, it wasn't as bad as he thought as Naruto sat with the two children of the Kazakagi, 
Conkru and Temari. Conkru was a bit weird dressed in all black despite living in an all desert village. Not to mention the makeup that he said a million times that was war paint. And Temari, well, Naruto liked her a lot. What could he say? He liked older women. I have a question, Naruto said Temari. Shoot, said Naruto. Is it normal for a Jenny to have a solo sensei in Kanoha? Or are you a special case? Oh, special case. My first sensei ignored me and didn't put too much into my training. I complained to the Hokage Jiji. And he decided that it was best for me to have my own sensei. Uncle was chosen because she was asked to become a sensei for some time now. It's a kind of test for her. Hokage Jiji. Are you two related? asked Hongro. No, said Naruto. He just helped me with a lot when I was smaller. I was an orphan. Thanks to the Kyubi attack, said Naruto. About that. How did the fourth guy kill it? said Temari. Oh, he didn't, said Naruto. As Temari and Conqueror looked at him. As the both of them saw the look on his face. As they wonder, is it seal inside of you, said Temari. As Naruto was surprised. How do you... Well, judging from the look on your face. When you say that you lost your parents due to the Kyubi attack, that look never came, but... When you said he didn't kill the Kyube, that look. Hey, how are you not crazy? asked Konkuru. As Naruto was surprised that they were still here, it seems they didn't care about it. Well, my seal, unlike your brother's, is strong. It's the strongest seal. It's powered by the Shinigami itself. The both of them were shot by that. Hey, do you think Jerry Asama can fix Gara's seal? If anyone can, he can. He's the best that Kanu has to offer. In the way of Fuinjutsu, said Naruto. As Naruto was happy that they were actually talking to him normally even though he was a Jinjolke. How long do you think it will take? He's been at it for hours now. He's getting close, a voice said, startling the two. As Uncle sat down beside Naruto. Have there been any improvements yet? Asked Temari. Yeah, he went from being held under to sleeping on his own and snoring, Uncle said. As it made them realize it was hope for the broken family. Both Temari and Tonkuro seem happy, knowing that their family might be stable. As Uncle saw Naruto smiling. Sure, he smiled a lot, but this one was one of true acceptance. Perhaps these two knew what he was, and they did not turn away from him. This was good, him having a couple of good friends. Come on, Naruto. It's time we check out for the night. We'll have an early day back to leave tomorrow. As Naruto nodded and said his farewells. Meanwhile, Jiraiya sat back with a long sigh. As he looked towards Raza, the Kazakage, it was done. Raza looked towards a new seal that cover his son back. He was taken aback when he saw that it was completely different, not to mention. It was on his back now. I had to completely rebuild the seal. They were contradicting seals and double seals restrained on one another. But now I fixed it to be one cohesive seal. Gar slowly opened his eyes. As he didn't say anything for a long while, he then finally spoke. I cannot hear mother anymore. The deafening voice that told him to murder everyone was gone and everything seemed a lot more clear. As he saw his father smiling at him, Gar was confused. I think it's time I explain a lot to you son. That shot Gar. Judging by the look on his face. As he didn't understand, he's never called him son before. Jerry saw that it was time for him to leave so he excused himself. As they talk, the next morning came quickly. As Naruto spoke to Gara, as he already said his goodbye to Konkuro and Temari, Gara cut him off. What is it that you fight for, Uzumaki? You seem much more powerful and stable than I am, said Gara. As he found out that Naruto was just like him, despite knowing that the seal was fully fixed, but they still had a hard life and yet Naruto seemed okay. Well, the people who are precious to me, said Naruto, like my sensei. My friends in Kanoha, and now you three, said Naruto, as Gar looked at him with white eyes. I am one of them? Yeah, of course, said Naruto. I mean, we're like the same after all. That's if you want to be friends, said Naruto as he extended a hand. Gar looked at the hand strangely, as he slowly reached and took it. As the both of them shook hands, well then, we'll be off now, said Naruto as they said their goodbyes. Konkuru, Temari. As the both of them turned towards their brother, they did not talk to him last night because of the 
whole situation with their father talking to him. I am sorry. They were shocked. As Gara closed his eyes, Tamar did not waste any time as she wrapped him up in a hug. His sand did not come up to attack her. Because she wasn't causing any harm, she hugged him. As Conqueror packed him on the shoulder, they had their brother back. As Tamar smashed, she watched a ninja's leaf. One week later, rest time is over, Uncle said, as Naruto flipped to his feet. What's wrong? We're heading to the land of Wave. What for? An assassination mission. Who's the target, Naruto asked. His name is Gato. A hell of a big shot, Uncle said. Wait, Gato? As in the millionaire Gato? For the Gato Shipping Company? Isn't he above my pay grade, said Naruto. Usually yes, but Land of Wade doesn't have much payments. So they offer up another way of payment and we accept it. What other way, said Naruto. They've offered up permanent trade routes, future students, a bridge name after the assassin, and just about anything else. We want if they can get or afford it, Uncle said. As Naruto I twitch. Let me guess, you just want the bridge name, don't you? Hell yeah, I can see it now. The great Uncle Bridge, she laughed. I don't think so. The great Naruto Bridge sound a lot better, said Naruto. Oh, we'll just wait and see. Now get your gear and let's move, she said. As the both of them vanish. Climb skip. As the both of them move. As they move through the forest at top speed. So why were you hired to kill Gato, said Naruto. We don't need a reason. Just a name and a location, Uncle said. I understand, said Naruto. But. The assassination of a powerful man should not be. A Sirak mission. You want the truth? She asked as Naruto nodded. We weren't hired to kill Gato. A bridge builder by the name of Tezuna came to Kanuha, asking for protection. Hokage-sama gave his protection to him, but after he checked out the land of Wave more, he found out about the real threat. So he took it upon himself to rid the world of Gato. So no bridge, no trade, just as as nation. Hmm, said Naruto. So once we kill Gato, can we see which team is protecting Tezuna? Sure, said Uncle. Time skip. Gato's base. A short, fat man in a business suit with a cane slowly made his way. As he passed by all of his higher mercenaries, by the end of this, he was going to have Tezuna, Zabuza, and that boy Haku killed. And nothing will stop the plan he set forth. His bodyguards open the door as they wait outside, as he got to work. Once I get rid of this bridge, the damn wave will be mine forever. As he sat down, only to feel something press in his throat. Gato looked down as he saw crystal blue eyes. If your lip even twitch, you're dead. As Gato went quiet, as Naruto glanced towards the wall, he noticed the odd frame section. He reached up and removed it as he saw the safe behind it. Open it, said Naruto. Gato was too afraid to do anything other than listen to this person, so he did what he was told. The moment he did, slice! Naruto took his head. Meanwhile outside, Uncle didn't have to worry, as Naruto was a master and he came to stealth already. As she waited, she then saw him, so how did it go? As Naruto held up two scrolls, what's the second? All the money he had in his safe. I figured Land of Wave could put it to good use, said Naruto. Uncle smiled and patted Naruto in the head. Well aren't you Mr. Nice Guy? Come on, you said we could see which team guarding Tezuna. Oh yeah, let's go Uncle said, as they vanish. Meanwhile in Kanoha, Sasuke was in a tree as he watched soccer. It turns out that she's getting new training, as Sasuke wanted to see this for himself. So far he wasn't impressed, she was practicing her kunai throwing and her hand signing speed. You can come out now. He froze. Did, did she know he was there? You're getting better at this, a voice said. Sasuke turned to see Sai stepping from behind a tree. So, what kind of spar shall we do today? Pure Taijutsu. Let's see if we fix those holes, Sai said. Want to make it interesting, she asks. What are you thinking, Sai said. Loser treat the winner to all they can eat at their favorite restaurant. Sounds fair. All I can eat tofu sounds nice, said Sai, as he dropped into his stance. As they started the fight, what followed was impressive, even to Sasuke. 15 minutes straight they fought, usually. She tapped out around 5 minutes because she couldn't keep up. And through the 15 minutes, Sai only hit her three times. Sai was definitely holding back. But she was getting better and better. As Sasuke felt jealous. 
seen how much she was improving so quickly. Time's up, Sai said, as Sokka took several deep breaths. As she smiled, looks like I won. Yes, three to one, said Sai. As Sokka giggled a bit, she then walked over and did something that Sasuke did not expect. She gave Sai a kiss on the cheek as they vanished. To say that he was shocked was a big understatement. She was now dating. He shook his head. It's not like he cared. As he decided to leave. Yeah, he didn't care. Meanwhile, Kurenai Sensei, we have two. Incoming fast. Can you tell who it is, Hinata? Not yet, their faces are hard to make out. Kiba sniff. I know that scent. It's Naruto, he said. Sure enough, Naruto flashed on the pier. As Ongo flashed in as well. Uncle Sensei, it's UI Senpai, said Naruto. As Kurenai cracked a grin, seeing her best friend appear, besides Naruto. What are you two doing here, she said. Hokage Sama sent us to... Naruto paused and glanced towards Uncle, who gave him a nod. Assassinate Gato. Tazuna eyes went wide. D did you do it? Yep, said Naruto. Proof of death is in the scroll as he held up the scroll. Proof of death, Kiba asked. As he was still shot that Naruto was the first to kill. And he didn't seem hung up on it. He seemed fine. Do you really want to know, Naruto asked. The group shook their heads after a moment. He's really gone, said Tazuna. As Naruto nodded. So, how's the mission going, Nai-chan? asked Uncle. Clean and clear, said Kurnai. Huh, that's actually surprising since. Gato had a price on Tazuna's head. Well, whoever he hired is buying his time, said Naruto as he looked around. As if on cue a heavy miss, starter flew in. Sensei this miss. It has chakra in it. As Naruto and Anko turned their gaze. As someone was standing there, the first was a woman. With long, auburny hair and crystal blue eyes. She was dressed in a blue battle dress with shin guards. The second was a tall muscular man with a large sword on his back. The lower half of his face was hidden by white bandages. To his right was a masked figure. Well shit, Anko said. Team 8. Protect Azuna, said Kurnai. There is nowhere safe, the woman said as she took a step forward. There is no pay for you here. I killed Gato this morning, said Naruto. The group paused. Well then, the woman said. You, what's your name? The name is Naruto Usamake. As Naruto glanced over her shoulder, two more men were there that weren't there before. Ayo, the woman spoke. The man had light teal hair and he also wore an eye patch. As he pulled out a book, as he looked through it, he then spoke, Naruto Uzumaki, Jinjulke of Konoha. Due to his appearance, people believe that he is somehow related to the Fort Okage. Said Eil, as Kurnai and Uncle froze, so did Naruto as well. As Naruto looked towards Kurnai and Uncle, they had these strange look in their eyes. First thing, how did these people know that much about him? Secondly, he was in the bingo book. Thirdly, wait, was he the Fortikage's son? Huh, looks like he didn't know. The man with the large sword said with a laugh. But Naruto was pissed off. Like really pissed off. Naruto, don't! But Naruto vanished. Zabuza, above you, Ayo said. Zabuza laughed as he brought his arm in an X motion. Until the hit connected. Snap! No way, said me. As Zabuza's arm broke. Just from one kick, as it fell to his side, Zabuza moved back. Who the hell is this kid? As he looked at his broken arm that legally implanted his side, he was now pissed. He had underestimated his foe and it caused him his arm for now. As Naruto was pissed off, so much information started to rush through his mind about his life growing up. All the hate, all the rage, it started to magnify into something that he didn't want but it was too much. As his little claws start to extend, his fangs start to enlarge. Red chakras start to bubble around him. If he was real, the Fort Okage's son, why was he put through so much trash? Why was he treated like garbage? The rage was so much that it got palpable. The ninjas on the bridge start to step back as red chakras start to whip through the ear. He's using the fox powers in me. Meanwhile, Naruto found himself in his mind. Why? Bam! Why? Bam! Why? As he kept on dropping his fist into the wall beside him. He didn't know where he was or what was going on but he was just so angry. 
and he had to let off some steam as he kept on dropping his fists over and over again. If he was a son of the Okage, why was he put through all that crap? Yet he couldn't answer any of those questions. Wait, where am I? He said. So you have come. As Naruto was shot by that voice, hey who is that? As he calmly made his way towards where the voice came from. As he arrived towards a giant cage, the largest cage he has ever seen. Two red eyes opened up behind it. So you're the fox, huh? said Naruto. As the eyes vanish. He took a step forward to see the fox better but instead of the fox, there was a young woman standing there. She had freakishly long orange hair and crimson eyes. She was clad in a red and orange kimono with her obi sash on her waist. Behind her, nine fox tails dash slowly from left to right. Was this a jutsu? Naruto wondered. What's going on? You're not a giant fox. No, I am not. While the fox is my true form, in here I can take this form to better. Talk to my host, she said. So, you're a woman? Would you prefer a male? I can do that if you prefer. Because I have no actual gender. I am pure chakra. Whatever you like, said Naruto. Then this form will work. Now you're here, what do you want? Is it true, said Naruto. Yes. You are the son of the Fort Akagi. Oh, why didn't anyone tell me, said Naruto. You would have to ask Hokage that one. As Naruto took a slow breath, trying to calm his mind. Wait, why are you being so nice to me? I sort of expected you to be evil or whatnot, said Naruto. Most people have seen that. But it's quite the opposite. I'm rather docile most of the time. Unless I'm under the influence. Of again jutsu by a damn Uchiha. Wait. An Uchiha controlled you to attack Kanoha? That's what you're saying? Hmm. I'm surprised you catch on so quickly. We can talk more later, perhaps. You should return to your world now. Back in the real world, Naruto found himself in Uncle's breasts. As she was holding him, and his face was right in her chest. Uh, Uncle Sensei, she looked down. Oh, thank heavens, you're back, she said. As she let him go, as Naruto looked around as he saw the era, was trash. Trees were smashed down. Luckily, the bridge was unharmed. It seems like he had moved from the bridge. Perhaps while he was punching his mindscape, he kept on punching down trees. Well, he didn't know. Was this all me? You, me, Sabuza. You push them back, your tails start to form, and they ditch. Your hurt, said Naruto as he saw, a gash along her side. Things happen, she said to him, shrugging it off. I, I'm sorry, said Naruto. I promise. This will never happen again. She pulled him back into a tight hug. Don't make promises you can't keep, she said. He didn't answer though as she wondered why. She realized he was bleeding from the nose. As a look of happiness was on his face. Oh yeah, she was squeezing him in her breasts. As Naruto was smiling happily. Time skip, Kanoha. As Naruto stood in front of Harrison, Harrison had a sad look on his face. The information regarding Naruto. Well, things had been leaked. Things that were out of his control. But Hiruzen never knew that he got that far. That people already know about this. Because, aside from the Yamanakas, there was not much blue eye. Golden here people in the village. Not to mention, because of his training Naruto face, he had lost all that baby fat and his face became more angular just like the fort. He looked exactly like him but a younger form. Remove the whisker marks and it would be him. So it was not too hard but Harrison did not know that information had gotten so far out of his control that he could not control it. Naruto, I understand why you're upset with me. But I hope you're willing to listen to me before you make any judgments. I'm still here, am I not? said Naruto. That is true. Yes, you are the son of Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki. Your father sealed a fox inside of you so he could save the village. Your mother was a fox's previous host. The night of her birth, someone ripped the fox from her and turned it against the village. Once the tail beast is removed from their vessel, their vessel will die. Your mother was able to hold off her death through sheer willpower, but she was fading fast. So with the help of your father, they see the fox at the cost of their life. Your father's final wish was for you to be treated as a hero, but obviously that didn't happen. Your parents had a lot of enemies, especially your father. 
So if the rumors were to get out early, something I could not stop, well, things would be bad. I was gonna wait until you were at least 16 years of age or a tune in before I tell you anything because then I believe you could have taken care of yourself. But I was wrong. I'm sorry, he said. True be told, Jay, I'm not that mad with you. But you should have accepted that I should have known this stuff. Like when I understand things, when I became a shinobi. All this time I thought I was as near the trail off. He sighed to himself as Hirsen saw that he was still angry and not to mention sad. I understand your disappointment, Ruto. I just hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me eventually. But for now, go home and cool off, he said. And think this over. I will send the envoy later on. For some things that you should have gotten. As Naruto fans should not say anything else. Okaya sama, uncle said. Oh, uncle. I'm sorry. I forgot that you were here. Perhaps it would be better if you took this stuff to Naruto, he said. He took the frame of the fourth guide of the wall. He then placed his hand on the seal. As he turned it. It popped open as he pulled it out. What's that? Everything that he should have gotten. All the bank pings to his parents account. His mother Kinjutsu, Taijutsu. His father and mother Kinjutsu and Taijutsu scroll. Including Funjutsu as well. And also Ninjutsu. His father famous ability, the Rasengan and the Hiroshin. Uncle eyes were wide. Wide wide like saucers as he couldn't believe what she was seeing. As she looked at Harrison, she took the items. As she still couldn't believe what she just heard. So much. Once he calmed down and get a proper, stable mind. This thing will help him a lot. For, for right now he need to sort out his pain. He deserved to be mad. He deserved to be angry for everything that he went through. At the moment Kakashi was walking on the road. His genuine team was gone. Sasuke was on probation. Uncle was new to Sensei and soccer. Well, she was being taught at the hospital. And Sai was a spy. He stopped as Hokage Monument came into view. As he looked at the face of his sensei, he messed up badly. He did not pay a lot of attention to Naruto because he was told to keep an eye on Sasuke not to mention. Sasuke was a flight risk, everyone could see that. But in turn, he messed up badly with the other students. He disappeared in a flash of leaf. He needed to have a talk with his Hokage. Time skip. Naruto's apartment. Normally, Uncle would just burst in and do what she wanted, but now, she knocked on the door. The door opened as she saw Naruto. He was crying. She instantly stepped in as she pulled him into a hug. I just don't get it, said Naruto. Why do they all hate me? When the fort asked him to accept me, said Naruto. People make their own choices, Brett. Sometimes they're just fools and wrong, she said. Sensei, did you hate me too? No, she said. I never saw you as anything except for Naruto. Thanks, Sensei, said Naruto. I know that you're hurting right now, kid, after I find out about this. But know this, I'll be here for you no matter what. Thanks, said Naruto. I'm gonna give you some time off. After that, we're gonna get right back to training, okay? He gave her a smile. Time skip. Uncle's apartment. Uncle was currently talking to a white snake. Why have you summoned me? You know Manda doesn't let people sign our contract anymore. No. I need to set up a meeting with Manda and myself. I want my Jenny to sign the contract. And I will get him to agree, Uncle said. The white snake looked at her for a moment. I will see what I can do, he said. A few days later, Uncle was worried. Naruto never missed training before. As she was moving through the village to go to his apartment as she paused for a second. When she noticed Kakashi standing in front of soccer. And Kakashi seemed nervous. She shook her head as she kept on moving towards Naruto's apartment. There was no outward sign of vandalism or damage to his apartment. No, she was getting pissed off. Did he skip training on her? As she landed on his small balcony, she could not see inside because of the windows. They were all covered with paper, so she went inside. She realized it was normal paper. This was all the Funjutsu testing paper. It was made to absorb chakra easier so a beginner in Funjutsu could get used to the art. Naruto, she called out. She stopped when she saw the last thing she would expect. Books. Piles of piles on books. As they were all books of Fuinjutsu. Wait, he was studying? 
She moved through piles of papers and books. She picked up one of the books that were open and the page that Naruto was on as he had marked it. This was not normal Fuinjutsu. This was some advanced stuff. But it's only been a few days. She opened said door of the bedroom and there he was. At his dex. Wait, where the hell did he get a dex? Well, either way, there he was at dex. Hard at work at something. Naruto, she said. As he grunted. And mumbled about something almost being perfect. Naruto, she called out. Huh? Who? As he looked up. Uncle. What are you doing, she said. As he was so enraptured in his work, he didn't even notice her. It seems, Uzumakis have a knack for Funjutsu, and it turns out I'm no different, said Naruto. I really like the art. He had ink all over himself and he looked like he hadn't slept in days. As Naruto reached and pulled a paper bomb, it was deactivated though. Okay, so it's a paper bomb, she said. Not quite, said Naruto. See, a normal paper bomb go boom and that is it. But this will seep the chalk into the item or object that it is on before, and it goes off. So instead of surface damage, you also get internal damage if it lands on its opponent. Kind of if you hold a cherry bomb in your hand and close your fist around it and it goes boom. As he pulled out another seal, that one was massively complex and she couldn't understand it. Now this little puppy is all sorts of awesome. I call it the cleansing seal. Once it is done, it will be able to remove unwanted things from a person. Such as poison, drugs, curse, seal, said Naruto. Excuse me, said Uncle. Her eyes going wide at that. It's still a work in progress, but I hope once I'm done, I can remove your curse, seal, said Naruto. As he rubbed his eyes, as he suddenly noticed he was very, very tired. Do you have any idea how advanced this stuff is that you're dabbling in, she asked. Of course I do. That is why none of this stuff is going to be tested with anyone nearby. It will all be handled with shadow clones and cadavers, said Naruto. As Uncle turned to see Pestle and Motors. Were you making poisons? As she knew those herbs. Yeah, that is what about half this research is on. I never knew poison could be this useful. I mean neurotoxin that target nerves and muscles. So you can capture instead of kill. What's that? Asked Uncle as she pointed towards a beaker. It's my first creation. I call it Foxfire Poison. It's odorless, tasteless and dissolve in water. But if you ingest it you die rather painfully. At least in theory. Another thing I need to find a way to test, said Naruto. Enough for now, Uncle said. You need to get cleaned up and get some sleep. It seems like you haven't slept in days. As Naruto rubbed his eyes. Yeah, he was exhausted, but it was just so much. Perhaps she was right. As Uncle couldn't let this be an obsession. She couldn't have him stay in the house forever, just working on nothing but Fujutsu. Time skip. Several weeks later. It had been a month and a few weeks since Naruto started his path of Fuinjutsu and poisons. And in both Jiraiya and Hiroshima examinations, Naruto was nearing master level. It turns out that it was the monkey side inside of him was a lot. As a kid, it was a knack when it came to Fuinjutsu. This stuff just came easy to him. But now they had a crisis at the moment. I'm going to make this short. I'm sending you guys with Team Kakashi to find Team Guy. That has gone missing during the mission that I sent him in near the land of Rice Field. I've already debriefed Kakashi so you're going to meet him at the gate as soon as possible. The two quickly made their way off after nodding. As they arrived to see Kakashi, let's go he said. As this mission was serious, Guy and his team was missing, no contact has been made. They had to make their way fast. Kakashi was surprised that Naruto was keeping up with them. Sensei said Naruto. As Kakashi glanced towards him. But he was speaking to Uncle. Yeah, this is one of the exceptions, Uncle said. Kakashi wasn't sure what they were talking about. But Naruto smiled and he picked up speed. As Uncle picked up speed as well. As Kakashi was the one that had to pick up speed now. Time skip. Land of Rice Field. A singular figure stood out. Of a base that looked like a snake den. The figure was a young silver haired man. As he made his way, it was time for him to melt back into Kanoha system so he can take the tune exams. He was positive this year he would have something to entertain him. Time skip. Three figures landed down on the tree. It has been a day. That is what it took them to reach. The land of sound. They had made good time but they still had to deal with. A cold trail. Kakash looked at the campsite. There were several bodies but none of them belonged. The team guy. 
Sensei, I found something, said Naruto. As he pulled a torn piece of banjo to the ground, it was heavily stained with blood and dirt. That's guys. Good job, Naruto, he said. As Kakashi bit his finger and went through hand sign. Summoning Jutsu. As Pakon came in, Pakon, can you track the scent? Pakon sniffed it. <laughs> it's weak, but I got it, he said. Naruto then paused. What's wrong? Say Kakashi. As Naruto's eyes closed for a second. Within his mind. What's up, said Naruto. I don't like this line of rice feel, said the great Kayube, as she was in her human form. Something is wrong. Come here, she said. As Naruto was confused as he stepped in front of the bars, one of her tails came out and poked him on the forehead. As Naruto stepped back, what was that? A gift. Do not tell anyone about it. It will help. Um, thanks, said Naruto, as he was not sure. What she gave him, as Naruto opened his eyes a second later. Let's get going, said Naruto. I'll explain later. And with that, they move. As Kakashi looked at him, he was talking to the fox, wasn't he? Pakon found a strange place. It was partially buried in the ground, as Guy's scent was in there. But Pakon told him that it was the foulest place he ever smelled. So how do we proceed, Uncle asked. He glanced toward Kakashi. Can you send a snake in there to check it out? Kakashi asked as several snakes slipped from her coat and went down in the base. As Uncle eyes hardened, as she took off in the base, Sensei, what's wrong? said Naruto as he went after her. It's his base, Uncle said as she rushed down the hall. Shit, this is bad. As Kakashi pulled off his headband showing his Sharingan, as Naruto paused, causing the boat in the pause as well. Why did you stop? That's why, said Naruto. As Gaia was chained up and unconscious, Kakashi flew over there with great speed to check. Guy, he's alive. Guy, he said. Kakashi. As Guy looked around confused. Where am I? You and your team were captured by Urchimaru, said Kakashi. As Guy's eyes snapped open as he looked around. We were resting for the night. The last thing I remember was a purple mist and darkness. As Guy snapped the chains that were holding him. As he got to his feet. As he didn't see Lee or Tintin or Neji anywhere. The base was too large for them to search the group so, against their better judgement they split up. As Uncle didn't like this, but they had to, so they split apart. As Naruto then realized what the Kyubi gave him, he then went through Hansine. As Naruto's body seemed to melt with a shadow. What is this? said Naruto. Welcome to the shadow world, Naruto, said the Kyubi in his head. As Naruto saw that everything was the same but somehow different. How does this place work? he asked. You can move through any place without being seen, heard, or touched. But you cannot affect anything either. You will have to use a jutsu again to leave the shadow world. To be able to hurt those that are not in shadow world, said Kyube. Naruto nodded. As this time he could do this. As they didn't want to run into any. One that might cause a uh, alarm or anything. That is why Naruto did not summon clones and spread them all around. Because if Guy's team was held at Kunai point. The assailants would surely kill them if they saw Naruto clones coming. But now. As Naruto summoned a bunch of clones. As they were in the shadow world. Spread out. Find Rock Lee, Tintin, and Ninja Hayuka. This spell if you find them. The clones nod as they split apart. Meanwhile, with Uncle. Uncle was greatly frustrated. She didn't like leaving Naruto alone in this place. And not to mention she couldn't find any of Guy's Jennings. But she found several ninjas. They were all dead of course, so they wouldn't raise alarm. As she entered her room. Uncle froze the room was full of nothing but bodies. Each one was experimented on in some way. And none of them are full bodies, indeed. Parts were missing for each as she closed the door. As she really hoped that Jennings were alive. Back with Naruto. As Naruto found a strange room. With a hand. The hand seemed like it was... Rotted. There was a strange ring there though. With a kanji for a void on it. As he slipped out of the Shadow Realm and took the ring. Before he slipped back in the Shadow Realm. Well this is strange. Kind of like it though, said Naruto as he slept it on. To his pinky finger. He was surprised to see that it resized itself to fit on his finger. There was a resizing seal on it. He had gotten a lot of knowledge on seals lately so it didn't surprise him as he left the room to continue his search. A clone dispersed as Naruto moved as he got the information. Meanwhile, as the door opened, well well girly, a large man said as Tintin was 
inside, ready to have some fun. Try anything and I'll kill you, said Tintin. The man chuckled. I like him feisty. Tintin watched as a figure rise out of the man's shadow, a tonto in hand, as she smirked. What's so funny? He asked her, seeing her smiling at him. She smiled because she knew that you're dead. As he pushed the tonto through the man's back, burst into his chest. Boy, am I glad to see that, head Ben, said Tintin with a smile of relief. As Naruto pressed the transmitter, it's closed this spell, as the others are in the other rooms. I found them, said Naruto. You did? The happy voice of Guy came. We're on our way. Good work, said Guy. As they quickly made their way to find him. But the thing was, they were not alone. And this time, it wasn't any weak sound ninjas. But guys, to be in subs right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below. Turn on that bell notification to stay posted. And also guys, remember to go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was The Ultimate Saiyan over Anime King 3 and enjoy that guys. And also over Anime King 2 I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto The Powerful Familiar so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys. And also, stay tuned for the what is coming your way over Anime King 3. Yes guys, I need up 3 channels. Which I post what you find every single day. Yes, you have not misheard that every single day. For you guys to enjoy one on each, guys. So three what if every single day for you guys to enjoy. So remember, if you're new, go ahead and click the red subscribe button. Links will be down in the description, so go ahead and check them out. And yeah, without further ado, I'm out for now. See you guys very, very soon. Peace, guys.